Okay, good morning, South Bay Church. Let's go ahead and be making our way to our seats. We're going to get started here worshiping in just two seconds. Be making our way in. Hey, everybody out there in the foyer. Down. Be with me, Lord. When I'm down. Be with me, Lord. When I'm low. 
only be with me, Lord. when I'm tired. Be with me, I need be you with only me, be with me, Lord. when I'm down. Be with me, Lord. when I'm lonely. Be with me, Lord. when I need you, Lord. No one baby, could hold me over sometimes I can feel a little shy and then I need to know that you are there that's why when I'm down when I'm low when I'm tired Walking around these walls I thought by now they'd fall But you have never failed me yet Waiting for change to come Knowing the battle's won for you have never failed me yet The promise still stands Great is your faithfulness Your faithfulness I'm still in your hands This is my confidence You never
promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness, your faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You never failed me yet. And I never will forget. You never failed me. Um, so we wanted to welcome you. We are the Martinez family, and um, we decided we wanted to share a couple scriptures that to us mean welcome. Um, for me, the scripture I'm going to share um, talks about taking us from the farthest corners of the earth, and the first fellowship, uh, first church in this fellowship of churches that I attended was actually on the other side of the earth. I was in Madrid, Spain, um, and so this scripture really meant a lot to me because that wasn't my home, but I was far away from home when um, God called me. So um, this scripture is Isaiah 41, and it says, you who, who am, mm, got to breathe. You'd think I wouldn't. <laughs> you whom I've taken from the ends of the earth and called from its remotest parts and said to you, you are my servant. I have chosen you and have not rejected you. Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and I will help you. Yes, I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Amen. Amen. Good morning, Tao Bay. How are you? Good? All right, all right. Who has stage fright? What, are, what is that? <laughs> God says in uh, Acts 17, uh, verse 26 and 27, says, From one man he made all the nations, that they should inhabit the whole earth. And he marked out their appointed times in history and the boundaries of their lands. God did God did this so that they would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him, though he is not far from any one of us. And so here you are much closer to him today. <laughs> yeah. Yes, so today we'd like to welcome you, obviously, in um, uh, actually Peter, as you know, on the day of Pentecost, was the first brother who got up and did a welcome. You know, he actually said, fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, this were his first words. So fellow Angelinos and all of you who live in California. Amen. So today we'd like to welcome you in multiple languages. We'll start with an easy one. And please tell me, just shout it out. Tell me what, you know, the language is. So the first one is Aloha. Yeah, I know you will be answering. Yes, I have you in my mind. So the next one is Benbindo. Benbindo. Portuguese. Whoever said Portuguese. Benbindo. So the next one is, uh, oh, Irashi Maise. Yeah. <laughs> I have certain people that I know will answer. Uh, bienvenidos. <laughs> Most of you now. <laughs> Valkomen. Very close. That's Velkomen. Valkomen. They're not here to the Swedish. Very close. Very, very close. Benvenuto. Italian, of course. And uh, Aquaba. Ghana, yeah! <laughs> uh, Talofa. Samoan. Samoan, yes. And of course, you all know, welcome. <laughs> so uh, today, yeah, also, no, we're going to do, uh, we're going to be praying, but before that, I believe um, you can greet your neighbor after the prayer for a few minutes. And I believe the kids will be dismissed to the classes. So let us pray. 
Dear Heavenly Father, we are so grateful to be here today. Father, just as in days of old, you've welcomed us with open arms, with your love and your sacrifice to our Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we are so privileged to be here today, and we just want everybody to feel welcome and loved and respected in every way, Father, and we just pray that your Spirit grants us that type of fellowship today. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.
my that the highest king would welcome me I was lost but he brought me in for oh, his love for me oh his love for me for the sun Jesus died for me. Jesus died for me. Who oh, the sun sets free. Who oh, is free indeed. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. In my Father's house, there's a place for me.
and my thing just turned off. So give me one second here. No joke, it's unbelievable. Like, and they make you change it like every nine months, so you can only imagine how many weird things and how hard it is to remember all this stuff. But, um, but anyway, so good morning, everyone. Um, welcome to South Bay Church. Just want to welcome everybody that's here, but also everybody that's on the live stream. Hope you're enjoying your coffee and your couch and probably the Laker game after. Um, but my name's Ryan Winkler, for those of you that don't know me, and I'm really excited to be here with you guys. And it's been really awesome, right? Because I feel like God's been doing some really awesome things in our fellowship lately, yeah. right? We did the 40 days of prayer and just hearing people get up and talk about the miraculous things that God's doing, right? Just stepping out in boldness and praying impossible prayers, yeah. right? Um, and then we culminated all this with a special time of Easter last week, celebrating the resurrection of Christ, yeah. you know? And I wanted to take this time to thank a few people um, for the support with the Easter egg hunt last week. Um, there's some families that really stepped up and it was, it was awesome, guys. The Bernards, the Brittos, the Carols, the Desarios, the Quintanillas, um, and everyone that really made it a special day, because so many people pitched in. Um, and, a, and a special thanks, a special, special shout out to Richard Kim, who without him being there, there would not be an Easter Bunny. So, <laughs> so thank you very much. Um, he was a sweaty mess. But, uh, <laughs> but something about going out into the community, right? And for no other reason than just loving people. Amen. Um, and that's really what, you know, these community days and outreaches that we've been doing are. We just go out and just spend time with the community and love people. And just to be able to do something for the kids and see their joy. It, it was really warming to the heart, you know. And I've heard some rumors floating around. Uh-oh. Yep. That I may have jumped off sides on the adult money hop race. <laughs> Let me just say this. I've been a track coach for many years. And I think, I'd like to say I know how to get out the blocks. Okay, so we can agree to disagree, but I would like to take this time to publicly dispute these claims. Um, No, but all joking aside, um, it's been a very hard week for me. Um, We've had some conversations, me and my wife, with another couple, and it's been really hard. Um, And then, as many of you guys know, I'm a football coach at El Camino College, and I found out Thursday that Kendall Sparks, number three here right in front of me, passed away Thursday. Um, he's 27 years old, um, and, you know, he was a guy, it was my first year at El Camino College, and he was, I was coaching running backs, and he was a guy that, you know, was the leader that I can turn to, right? He, I mean, he helped me learn this, the, the playbook. He helped me to get acclimated. Like, he, he was as much a support to me as I was to him, you know, and, and just the fond memories of being out on the field with him and, and, and praying and, and being in chapel together. Um, and just to know that he went and got a scholarship to go play football in the Midwest. He, he earned his master's degree, and he was just starting his adult life. Wow. Um, and so th- this has really hit me hard this week. Um, just such a good person that just did, you know, didn't get to live this out. And so I just wanted to take a moment to honor his life. Um, you know, Kendall, you will be missed. Um, but the loss of Kendall just magnifies for me the importance of the message that I have for you today. Um, you know, and it's weird how God knows when we need encouragement, yeah. right? I was sitting in the, sitting in the restroom, <laughs> go, going through my notes this morning, <laughs> drinking some coffee. But, but I, I got a message on Facebook. About 20 years ago, um, I spent a summer in Ghana doing some missionary work. And I got a message this morning from Davidson. Um, he was on that trip with me, who now lives in Jamaica, I haven't talked to him in over 15 years, and out of nowhere, he messaged me this morning. And it was just like, I I just felt like God knew I needed some encouragement this morning. Um, And it was just like a warming of the heart, you know, like this this brother that I was so fond of um, that I haven't talked to in so long, just just for no reason, just reached out. Um, And that's just what God does, right? He he, he meets us where we're at. Um, But I also am excited that we have a current player from El Camino College today that's going to share with us a little bit about what God's been doing in his life. Right? So I have all sorts of emotions going on, right? But, uh, you know, I'm just really grateful to be here. But let me, let me open us up in prayer. Um, God, I just thank you so much, Lord, for who you are. I thank you for bringing us here to, together. Um, and I just thank you, God, that um, you're always there. I just pray, God, that it's not me speaking, but it's your spirit speaking, that I could get out of the way. Um, and I just pray that you would speak into our hearts, God. I, this message is so important had so many conversations lately and, and just the wrestling with my own self 
Um, and I just know, like, how important this is, God. So I just pray that everyone here can take something from this, that you would speak to their hearts, that you would encourage them, and that we would all go out of here, God, just joyful and in peace. God, I love you, Lord, and I pray this in your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. So today's message is, who am I? You know, and I love this image right here of the fingerprint, right? It's like identity. You know, and I, this is something that I think we could all wrestle with. And, you know, God's brought me on quite a journey this last year. Um, and I'm going to share a little bit about my journey with you today, if that's okay. Um, I've been struggling internally um, just on my identity recently, right? And I don't know if it's like, I, I don't want to say midlife thing, but maybe a close to midlife thing. Um, <laughs> But, I, but I, I've had to take a long, hard look at myself, right? And, um, you know, who am I? Who am I? I've had a lot of change in the last four years, right? Um, Natalie and I have had our two beautiful boys, Abel and Silas, right? That's been a huge, and there's a lot of families in here that can, that can relate to that, okay? Um, with the additions, I've decided to take a step back from coaching this past year. So that looked a lot different than, for me this year than it has in the past. Um, and I've had to take a long, hard, deep look at myself. I mean through these wonderful books like EHS that we went through that are just having to magnify everything about myself, um, and just a lot of experiences over the last four years, right, and, and what God is starting to reveal in me. And what he's revealed to me is that my identity is really wrapped up in what I do, right? I'm a football coach. I'm a teacher. I'm a husband. I'm a father. But I'm a wreck, Right? And, and that's what God's starting to reveal to me, right? And so stepping back from football this year felt as if a part of my identity was taken. And, and I didn't feel whole. Right? Having our two boys has completely, completely refined what it looks like to be a husband. It's not just me and my wife trying to figure things out. Now we're trying to figure things out with all this other stuff. And... and you know, I'm trying to figure out how that looks and, and what, what my new role is supposed to look like in all of this. I'm a father now. <laughs> I should just drop the mic and walk, right? <laughs> but I feel like sometimes I don't know what I'm doing. Like, there's days where I'm like, man, like, what an amazing day. And there's days where I'm like, what am I doing? You know, and my identity sometimes can feel more like failure than father. Um, and even in my identity and how I feel loved has changed. Right? Um, and I'm sure a lot, some of you guys, many of you guys have probably read the five love languages, right? And I've always had the two that I always thought was my love languages. Um, but my beautiful wife, Natalie, recently told me, you know, I, I think one of your love languages is words of, of affirmation. And I thought to myself, I don't need someone to tell me things about myself for me to feel loved. Like, I don't know if it's that whole, like, like I don't need that. Um, you know, and I never felt I did. Like, it was always like, you know, quality time spent right, or, or, you know, physical touch. I think most men could probably understand. Um, but it's amazing how God can use marriage, use relationships, and use parenting to point out all sorts of truths about oneself, yeah. right? And that is how I landed on today's message, who am I, <laughs> right? Because this is a struggle that I've been going through, and I've been hearing a lot of this, this same thing echoing through our church. You know, Lisa got up about a month ago and really spoke into this. And it was just kind of like she was, spe she was speaking to my heart, right? Um, so I want to start off today in Isaiah 55, 8 through 9. One of my favorite verses. Absolutely love this verse. And, you know, it's a, script, it's a scripture that I have always held tight. And it says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so my ways are higher than your ways, and my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. And... I've always viewed this scripture in light of God's sovereignty, okay, that I, he's in control, that his ways are higher than mine, that his thoughts are higher than mine, that when I don't understand what's going on in my life, that I can trust it because I know he's working behind the scenes, and I can trust and accept the things in my life because of it. But it, it's kind of wild, right? Like, have you ever had a moment where you're sitting down reading a scripture, and the spirit will interrupt you and use this scripture to speak a whole new truth to you? Right? God's word is truly living and active. Yeah. You know, and that's what happened to me reading this. And, and th these two statements, God's thoughts are not your thoughts. His thoughts are higher than your thoughts. For the first time, these verses, these, this specific scripture, spoke to me directly about my identity. And I'm going to show a short video here. Um, and, and 
you'll, you'll get a gist of what I'm talking about. Again? I look in the mirror and see pimples, small lips, smudged eyeliner, no eyelashes, acne scars, no cheekbones, a big nose, crooked teeth, blackheads, limp hair, dry hair, messed up nail polish, a flabby stomach, out of date clothing, scars, body hair, birthmarks, an uneven complexion, the first signs of wrinkles, a big forehead, bushy eyebrows. I talk and hear a girl who is annoying, too loud, too shy, sounding like a man, mean, vain, ditzy, distant, timid, too bold, too serious. I go to bed and think I am not measuring up to my potential, useless, worthless, too much, not enough, broken, confused, lost. Never going to find love, hopeless. But you look at me and see beauty, a work of art, redemption, the mind of Christ, renewal, your own image, wonder, value, your own child, born again, loved, belonging, a new creation, Righteousness, Christ, full of life, guided by the Holy Spirit, helped, empowered to do your work, transformed, a child of light, chosen, a servant, a steward, a soldier, witness, worker, a citizen of heaven, ambassador, hopeful, a future, being renewed day by day, someone worth chasing, a girl worth dying for. God, please help me see myself through your eyes. You know, and I'm sure we all can relate to this in some way. Um, you know, God, just please help me see myself through your eyes. Um, you know, we can all struggle with self-image. Um, you know, but what I love about this video is in the middle of it, there's this beautiful shift, mm -hmm. right? Last time I talked about, you know, butts always sink, right? But this butt was good, right? And she shifted into this, this point where God, what God said about her started to penetrate her self-image, right? It started to shape her identity and, and, and really her belief, right? And, and she, she came out the other end a bit different. Right? And God wants our identities to be rooted in, in his thoughts because his thoughts are true. Amen. Right? His thoughts are greater, they're higher, and his thoughts define our identities. So I want to take a look at the foundational scripture of our identity. And, and the worship team did a great job with the song before I got up here. Um, that really speaks to this. But, you know, I am a child of God. Right? It says in 1 John 3, 1, See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. For those of us who are found in Christ, it all starts right here. It's the foundation of our identities. It's the truth in which all the parts of our identities flow. Um, and it's funny how you think you know some things, and then circumstance change, and you realize you really knew nothing, right? Um, and that's been my four years of parenting. Um, and, you know, Natalie and I, you know, have been checking out different books, trying to just kind of get an idea, right? Uh, uh, get some bigger grasp and different strategies. You know, what are we doing? Right? And we were reading a book called Parenting with Logic, or Love and Logic by Foster Klein. And God's really been speaking to me about how much my boys' identities can be wrapped up in the messages that I send them. Right? Not just the direct messages, which is what I'm con conscious of, but also the indirect messages and what's implied by what I say or do not say. That's a heavy weight, yeah. right? Like, if I don't even know I'm doing it or, what, or that I'm not doing something, like, how do I fix it? Yeah. Right? 
And, and the book says, you know, there's two types of kids in this world. And I'll, well, for our sake, there's two types of people in this world. One gets up in the morning, looks at the mirror and says, hey, look at me. I'm all right. I like that person, right? And I bet other people are going to like me too. Then there's the other person that gets up in the morning and the first thing they look at, they say, oh, no. Look at me. I really don't like what I see. And I bet others aren't going to like it either. Right? And so there's two radically different self-images here, right? These self-concepts that we have. And there's two radically different outlooks on life that come through these. And there's so many things throughout our lives that mold our self-image and our identities for good and for bad, right? There's success and there's failures. There's words that build up and then there's words that tear us down, yeah. right? There's the presence or the absence of our parents, you know? And, and what about this? What about a well-intentioned but misguided leader in the church? Right? There's a lot of things that, that, that form our self-images and our identities. And I would argue that in today's, with the societal norms that we have, and the social media, and the different platforms, that this is just magnified, that it's intense, and it's image distorting. Okay? You know, the need to live, to live up to the photoshopped image. Right? Or, you know, where we try to filter away the things that we don't like about ourselves. And we're all guilty of this. Right? I mean, I got a scar up here that Nat touched up this morning, so I'm right here. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, we all do it. I look, I look pretty young in some of my pictures now, right? So it's not, it's not something that, that we don't do, but it's, I think when it comes to it, it's the heart of where it's coming from, right? Do, 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 I, do I trust what God says about me? And then there's the slogans out there. I am more than enough. Right? I am the measure of my worth. And I say I am worthy. Are these slogans bad? No. Right? But if they're not rooted in, in God's love, they're distorted. Right? Yeah, right? Yeah. And unless they're rooted in God's truth, they'll not, they're not going to hold up to the world. That's right. They're not going to hold up to our pasts. Know. And they're not, sure as heck not going to hold up to our hurts. No. No way. So who am I? <laughs> Right, And this is what God has really been speaking to me, um, is that I am who God says I am. Point blank, period, that's who I am. And that's where I need to find my identity, because God is the author of our identities. You know, he wants to create in us a self-image that cannot be shaken, an image that doesn't come from ourselves or others or experiences or hurts, but from the creator of all things, the author and perfecter of our faith. In Genesis 1, it says, I am created in the image of God. Okay? And unlike everybody else's views and even our own that shift and change and move, God's view, his thoughts about us do not change. They are firm, they are rooted because they are rooted in him. And he is unchanging. Right? It says, I am God's special possession and I am fearfully and wonderfully made. And his love and our identities are intrinsically linked. And I love how we can speak these for ourselves. I am God's special possession. Brian, you are God's special possession. Bella, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. And we can claim these for our identity. Um, you know, in this book, Parenting with Logic, um, the book states that the person's self-concept can be compared to a three-legged table. All right, so I was gonna bring one up, but oops, there's the last slide, the three-legged table. You know, you look at a three-legged table, and it, it does, you know, it's, it looks stable, but not really, but they are really stable, right? Um, they're sturdy, you know, if the three legs, but here's the problem, if any of these three legs are slightly shorter than the other, or if it's sitting on an uneven surface, yeah. or we put, a, and then we put a little bit too much weight on it, what's gonna happen? It's gonna fall, right. you know? And so I want to look at this a little bit deeper, and, and, you know, talking about the three-legged table and using this illustration really to share what God has impressed upon me recently. The first leg is love, okay? In the book, it says, I am loved by the magical people in my life, that kids need to know this, right? And that children must know they are unconditionally loved and that love comes with no strings attached. But us being children of God, we need to know this too, 
right? And in, and in 1 John 4, 16, it says, and so we know and we rely on the love of God has for us. God is love. You know, and often, others' love can come with, can come with conditions, right? We feel like we have to live up to a lot of things. We feel like we have to earn it, right? And, and that, you know, we miss this whole unconditional love. There are strings attached, right? But what, the, but what they're saying is that when we can get to this point of understanding the unconditional love, and that comes through God and who he says we are, then we can, keep, we, we can really live up to that. In Matthew twenty two thirty nine, 39, the second greatest commandment, love your neighbor as yourself. I've had a whole new, uh, whole new concept to this recently, is that I used to think, okay, I love others as I love myself because I really love myself. Like, we're really full of ourselves. We, we think very highly of ourselves. We're, we're very prideful. A lot of us are very, pardon my French, a little stuck up, right? And there's really a lot of love that we have for ourselves. So like, wow, if we could really just love people like that, man, we're really loving people. <laughs> that, that's always been my, my concept of the scripture, right? But it, it's interesting because God's totally just, just, just smashed that. Now I see that it's, it's those of us like that that are typically ones that really don't feel loved. They, they don't have love for themselves. And so we, we, we cover it up and, and mask it with all sorts of things, right? And so what the scripture says to me now is this. Until I can love myself, I can't love others. Until I love myself, I can't love others, right? And that, and, and that becomes tricky, Right? We see it in our marriages, we see it in our relationships, we see it in all sorts of things. And it's because we're not standing on the unconditional love of the Father. The second leg is confidence. Okay? And I'll relate it to God's promises, right? Um, and in the book it says, I have what I need to make it. All right? So kids need to have that confidence that they have what they need to make it. And for us as children of God, that confidence comes through what God has promised. And last time I shared, we looked at Jonathan and Caleb, right, entering the promised land and how these two men's faith were different than everybody else's, different from the masses, and they, they had confidence through God's promises. Yeah. Uh, before Moses died, he commissioned Joshua, right, before they finally went in and took the promised land in Deuteronomy 31.6. And it says this, do not be afraid or terrified because of them, for the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. He spoke God's promises into Joshua that day. He says, be confident. God is with you. You are not alone. You are not forsaken. And Joshua, in return, was able to say, I am not alone. I am not forsaken. And claim those promises for himself. And that's where his confidence came from. You know, and it gave him the confidence because he understood God's promises are rooted in God's love. Um, and it gives me the ability to step out in confidence, knowing that I have everything I need to make it. Why? Because God promises it. The third leg is identity. The third leg is identity. And honestly, this is, this is a new concept for me. Um, and that's why I felt the need to speak on it. Um, and it talks about the kids saying, I'm capable of taking control of my life. That, and it, it, it goes into all sorts of things, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take some liberties here. Uh, when we know our identity in Christ, our true God-given identity, we become capable of anything. Okay, what God says about each one of us is true. It's as true as the grass being green, the sky being blue, red sweater being gray. Okay, it, it's as true as I breathe oxygen. I drink water to live, okay? And it is the sustenance that helps us not only to survive, but to strive. So I want to look back at Isaiah 55, 10 through 12 here. And it says, as the rain and the snow come down from the heavens and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish, so, is my word, or so, so that it yields seed of the sower and bread for the eater, so is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty. It will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. You will go out in joy and be led forth in peace. And I have always looked at this in terms of evangelist, evangelism, that when I go out and, I, and I, I speak the gospel and I share with people that the words will not come back empty, whether they accept it or not, God will use it. Amen. Okay? But I have a new look, outlook on this again. When it says, 
my words will not come back empty. I also see that God is saying that if we just listen to what he's saying about us, if we look at the scriptures and we look at what God says our identity is in him, it will not come back empty. Just like the video, it will slowly change our self-image. It will slowly mold our identity. And it will change us from the inside out. And then and only then, as it says in the last verse, will we go out in joy and be led forth in peace. So I'm super excited right now to invite Brian up to stage. He's a running back at El Camino College. And he, uh, we've spent a lot of time over the last nine months getting to know each other, getting in the word, praying. Um, and I'm just excited to hear what he has to share with us today because I know uh, a lot of what we've talked about it has stemmed from a lot of the stuff that's, you know, I'm sharing with you today. Let me see if I can get this. Speak. You guys hear me? Yeah. Yeah, speak loud, brother. Apparently, apparently Fred said I needed to speak louder, so. <laughs> Very nervous. So. Uh, I want to, um, first off, start with a scripture. Oh, wait, actually, I didn't even introduce myself. I'm Brian. Um, I go to El Camino College. I'm uh, 22 years old and uh, from New Jersey. Um, so, okay. So I want to start with a scripture that really impacted me. It's Romans 8, 38 through 39. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So what I got from that was really simple, is that nothing, nothing can separate us from God's love. And uh, I mean, his love is unconditional. I don't have to do anything like too crazy or extra for him to love me because he just loves me for who I am, not, not what I do. So... I want to start off by um, sharing my struggles and victories uh, with my self-image and identity. So throughout my life, I've uh, put up like this front, uh, like this mask, and you know I always walk around with a mean face, Grinch face. So like if you don't know me, you might just think I'm like a mean person or something. So it's really just that athlete mentality of uh, just always being serious, just pushing through. Um, But in reality, um, I'm walking around in deep thought in my head, just wondering, you know, am I good enough? Uh, Do I match up? You know, am I I worthy? Um, And honestly, this all stems from, you know, the relationship with my father growing up and, you know, his lack, the the lack of presence. Um, And it's, it's kind of, bled into other areas of my life um, and it's hindered my my self-image so even today with you know the search for a scholarship and you know a new opportunity and recruiting and like I said I'm an athlete so I'm at a community college just searching for scholarship for a bigger school so it's hard to not slip into those thoughts Um, and you know, I, I kind of think back to, you know, when my father, you know, wasn't present for like my fourth birthday or fifth birthday. And, you know, I sort of view that the same way I view like this recruiting cycle. You know, is God going to come through with that scholarship? You know, the, the same way, you know, my, how my dad wasn't, you know, present. You know, is, is God going to be there when I, when I need him the most? Or is my father going to be there when I need him the most? So I would say these last nine months have, you know, helped and uh, changed this conception about myself. Um, And being part of this church, um, honestly, has made me realize the importance of, you know, fellowship um, and family and brotherhood. And I would say... um, building those relationships with guys like Red or uh, Coach Winkler. Um, Those guys have challenged me to dive deeper into my faith um, and draw closer to God um, by, you know, like getting in the Word. And I could even say that 40 days of prayer book really helped me a lot. 
Um, so through that, you know, God sort of shifted my thinking to where, like, I don't feel like I'm a failure or, you know, I don't, those thoughts don't control me or I don't compare myself to others because uh, I, I, I know who I am in Christ. Um, and, you know, those thoughts don't control me. Um, and when, even if I have those thoughts, I just surrender it to him. Um, so, you know, when you know, when you know how much God loves you and you understand his grace and understand that his love is unconditional, you know, you're secure in yourself and you love yourself. So I wanted to end with this letter that was shared with me and really impacted me. Um, and each, each line in this letter is a reference to a scripture um, in, the, in the Bible. So it's called A Letter from Your Perfect Father. So it goes like this. You may not know me, but I know everything about you. I know when you sit down and when you rise up, for you are my offspring. I knew you even before you were conceived. You are not a mistake, for all your days are written in my book. I am not distant and angry, but I am the complete expression of love. And it is my desire to lavish my love on you, simply because you are my child and I am your father. I offer you more than your earthly father ever could, for I am the perfect father. Every good gift that you receive comes from my hand, for I am the provider and I meet all your needs. My plan for your future has always been filled with hope. My thoughts toward you are countless as sand on the seashore. As my child, you are called by my name. I created you for my glory. One day I will wipe every tear from your eye and I'll take away the pain you have suffered on this earth. I am your father and I love you even as I love my son Jesus. He came to demonstrate that I am for you, not against you. Jesus died so that we could be together. His death was the ultimate expression of my love for you. I am always with you. I'll never leave you. I love you more because of who you are than what you do. Nothing can separate you from my love. You have my very DNA inside you. Even if your mother and father forsake you, I never will. You are loved, you are precious, you are beautiful, and you are mine. Thank you. Still on? Okay. Yeah, and, and just I've been so blessed to spend this time with Brian. Um, it's just, uh, it's been so good for the heart, right? To see a young man really going after his faith the way he is, um, just seeing his identity change. Like, even the conversations that we had back during the season, where it was so focused on what, where am I going to end up? What's the scholarship I'm going to get? Like, it's not even talked about anymore because he just has complete trust. And it's amazing what God does when God just digs into that heart and he starts to mold our identities and he starts to change the way that we see ourselves. You know, and it's something that he's always struggled with and to see him start to get victory over, man, I'm so proud of you, dude. Keep going after, keep going after Jesus, bro. Keep going after you. Because he's there with you, bro. Real talk. Um, you know, and, and we all st struggle with these things, right? So. Um, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to actually transition into the communion part of the message um, to finish it out. And what we're going to look at first is I want to briefly look at the seven I am statements of Jesus. Okay? See, Jesus made these statements because he was loved by the Father. He knew, he knew the statements of his identity were linked to God's promises, and he knew who he really was. And he says, I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am the door of the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I am the resurrection and the life, and I am the way, the truth, and the life. I believe there's one more. And I am the true vine. And the point I want to make is we can claim our identity through Jesus with boldness and say, I am who God says I am. And as we take communion in remembrance of Jesus, and we take the bread, which represents his body, and we drink of the cup, which represents his blood. 
I want you to listen to the I am statements that, I, that we can claim about ourselves, our true identity in Jesus. Um, and then I will pray for the communion, and then I'm going to put another slide up there with a bunch of I am statements that I hope speaks truth into your hearts. I hope helps to mold your identity. I hope if you had any, any a week where you're questioning yourself that this will cut through that. Okay? And these are all, once again, these are scriptures that I've got from brothers and sisters in our fellowship. Okay? It really... Last time I did this, too, with the promises, and it's been so awesome to ask people from the fellowship to, to share with me what resonates for them and learn from them and grow from them and see where, how God speaks to my brothers and sisters, right? Because then God starts to speak to me in new ways. So li- I just want you to listen to these, then I'll pray, and, I'll put the, and then I'll put it up, and then I believe uh, the worship will end up coming up for another song. In Ephesians 1, 4 through 7, these are all in just one scripture, Who am I? I am chosen. I am blameless. I am adopted. I am God's child. I am loved. I am redeemed. And I am forgiven. Let me pray for communion and then I'll put the other slide up. And I hope you guys can just look at that and just marinate in who God says you are. Father, we just thank you for today, Lord. We thank you, God, that our identity is not wrapped up in our failures, in our past, um, in the hurtful words of others, um, where we fall short, where we have successes, none of that, God. Our identity is rooted in you, um, that we can step forth in love, we can step forth in confidence, and, and it will change our identities, and that we can claim the things you say about us with a statement as, I am. So who am I, God? I am who you say I am. And I just pray that you would put that on everybody's heart here today, that that would be everybody's truth, that we wouldn't have to turn to slogans or different things, but we could turn to your word and be built up into the children of God that you have called us to be. And I just thank you, Jesus, for your sacrifice. I thank you that you loved us so much, God. Not only did you get up and claim I am, God, but you were also loved us so much that you were willing to sacrifice yourself for us to take our sins upon you and give us this new identity. We love you, God, and we pray this in your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. I just wanted to say for you guys, if it's hard to sing and you're thinking about all this, this amazing message from Ryan and what Brian shared, you know, I just want you to listen to the words and like kind of pray them in your heart to God. Um, And if not, you know, sing along because this message is for each and every one of us. my name 
and I love how Paulette sings things. Yeah. Okay, good morning. good morning. My name is Maureen Gibson. Thank you, Rhett, for asking me to lead the thoughts and contribution for today's service. However, before that, I ex plan to explain the slide behind me. First, in 2019, the Department of Children and Family Services asked our churches to step forward and partner with res residential placements to bring Christmas holiday celebrations to their facilities. South Bay partnered with the new concept short-term residential therapeutic program, and this past December we celebrated our fourth year together by bringing this home of eight young men, ages 15 to 18, a party, complete with a meal of their choice, baked goods, games, prizes, gifts, and most popular, dodgeball competition in their backyard. <laughs> Gratefully, their staff, the youth, and our volunteers have the joint desire to build our relationship deeper over time, and we've now agreed to at least four events a year. Next Saturday, a volunteer team plans another afternoon of enjoyment complete with food, games, prizes, and Easter baskets for each youth filled with items befitting a male team. Today is the last day to donate items, gift cards, and our cash. See Chelsea Brito or Holly with your donations. Second, we have the great opportunity of supporting our beloved Brian Craig in the upcoming Relay of Life. This event is scheduled for May 6th from 9 a.m. till 10 p.m. at South High in Torrance. We are looking for at least two volunteers to sign up for every 20-minute time slot throughout the day. Once again, please see Chelsea Brito at the table in the back to select a time slot to walk on May 6th. Now for contribution talk. One of my most inspirational scriptures relating to contribution for me is Malachi 3.10, which reads, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the gates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be room enough to store it. I believe this scripture defines my life as a disciple. I became a Christian in September of 1994. The following spring, when our church began announcing the requested amount for the upcoming special contribution, I became overwhelmed and actually began to sweat. <laughs> Despite having had a stable job and income, I had brought with me into my Christian walk a debt of amount of about $40,000 on credit cards. As up until the announcement that day, I was unaware of the special contribution collection each spring where churches and our fellowship, with many resources, give annually to those churches around the world with less resources. I was amazed with this concept of giving to the churches around the world and wanted to participate fully. However, as I could not envision how I would be able to gather the amount suggested in a timely fashion, I asked our then minister as to whether it would be best for me to focus on reducing my debt or paying the full special contribution. After my discussion with him, I was very inspired to do all that I could to work towards paying off my debt and to participate fully with the specials giving. I applied myself to this goal by attempting to work overtime and by curbing my spending. As the time was ticking by, I could clearly see this strategy was not going to work. <laughs> so I looked around my home to see if there was anything I could convert into cash and found in my drawer a sack of stack of savings bonds, which I was receiving monthly from my job in the amount of $50 each. If you are not familiar with savings bonds, they are not actually worth the face value for many years. Nonetheless, I took the stack to the bank and was gratefully able to fully participate in giving the special contribution. Approximately one to two weeks after submitting this contribution, my 93-year-old Aunt Liz passed away unexpectedly with a massive heart attack while mowing the lawn. <laughs> I flew back home to my hometown and accompanied my mom in going to the bank and opening the lockbox of my aunt. There we found not only her will, which explained that she left everything to my brother and I, as well as some cash and certificates of deposit. At the very bottom of the lockbox, we also found a savings bond. 
fully matured with my name on it in an amount which almost was three times my special contribution. With all of the money from my Aunt Liz, I found myself completely out of my $40,000 credit card debt, of which I had envisioned taking years to pay off. After some time, I reflected carefully as to what had just transpired and began to understand that giving, as well as generosity, actually have faith as the fundamental element. With this newly learned understanding, I prayed to God that as long as I was able, I planned to increase my special contribution by a generous amount every year, which is what I did for the next 10 years until I married in 20, 2006. The scripture I opened with calls us to test God with our giving, which equates to trusting God in the area of our finances. I am so grateful that God allowed me to experience this teaching my very first year as his follower. I've had to review this lesson a number of times in my heart over my 28 years of my walk, and yet my experience has found God's promise of so much blessings coming from heaven very real. I also have been glimpses of, by God of how my giving has amazingly blessed others. Please don't hesitate to ask me to share some of these stories with you anytime. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, please increase our faith to always trust that you will care for all of our needs. During this period of our 40 days of prayer, help us to learn that our impossible prayers are routine matters for you. Please have us now witness the floodgates opening as blessings pour out as we strive to bring the whole tithe into the storehouse. Also, Father, we pray for Tim Sutherland, whom has recently been diagnosed with cancer. We pray all these things in Jesus' holy name. Amen. All right. Who's ready for some announcements? Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, I'm Joe. I've got some events to share with you. So tonight is the leaders meeting at the Marici's from 5 to 7.30. And dinner is provided. That's always very important, so thank you, Marie. Uh, as you know, we've got a church basketball league. I see a couple of members out here. So the church basketball league is for all nine regions, and um, got a video of some highlights from the South Bay Waves. Jalen was practicing his dunk. That was really cool. So um, as you can tell, they won last night. And uh, so they're playing the championship game next Saturday against Westside at 8.30. So go and show your support at the Family Church Gymnasium in Whittier. And uh, our, our own Betty Collins is going to be singing the national anthem. Uh, next, on the 30th, is House Church. Uh, 
Uh, so on the 30th, on Sunday, uh, the entire staff will be in Arizona for the Pacific Southwest Conference. So as usual, uh, communion will be provided by Jen. So if you're a small group leader, so you can pick it up from her. And then last, we've got an announcement about youth camp from Steve. Yep. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, Joe. If you were looking in that video for me playing basketball, you'd be looking for a very long time. Very long time. But uh, it's fun to watch uh, all those guys out there uh, yeah. do stuff that I can't do. Uh, anyway, uh, we've got a quick video, a little promo video about youth camp. Uh, it's coming up July 11th through the 15th. If you've got preteen aged children or grandchildren yeah. or cousins or nephews or whatever, and they'd love to come, and that means uh, uh, if they're going into the 5th, 6th, 7th, and 8th grade, they would be coming into, uh, they would be invited to come to preteen camp. And uh, it's just a great opportunity. I want to encourage the parents, uh, really try to uh, consider making an investment in your kids, laying the spiritual foundation for your kids' uh, relationship with God. So let's uh, go ahead and show the video. Uh, we are taking volunteers uh, for folks that want to come and be counselors at preteen camp. We need volunteers. So if you're a mom, a dad, a, a brother, or just a single that w loves the kids and wants to, to influence their development, uh, come see me and we'll get you signed up. So with that, uh, here's, a little, here's a little promo video. Church, just go ahead and stand up. We're going to close out with one more song.
all of a sudden, I am unaware of these afflictions we glimpse like glory. And I realize just how beautiful you are and how and bring your affections on for me. And oh, how he loves us all. Oh, how he loves us. Have a great day, everybody.